So what's on the agenda for tonight? I've got something here. Got it in the mail the other day from uh, Delaware County, Ohio. Uh, for Michael, I scratched out some info to protect the innocent. And I'm just going to start trying to spall and reduce this nodule. I have no idea what's going to happen or what it is. Supposedly, it's chert. I've seen stuff like this, a little bit like this, before. Anyway, it's going to be a challenge, right? One of those challenge things. Mm -hmm. Has some internal cracking, that discoloration there. That's a natural existing crack. Let's see what else. I could be using a big old hammer. But this stuff seems crackly enough. I don't need to use something big and major. I don't know. This feels like some of the limestone-ish stuff I was using not long ago. I don't know. It looks blocky to begin with, right? It's got blocky contours. Which uh, allows a lot of natural platforms. Or it allows me to strike a lot of these natural platforms. It looks like it has fossils in it. Which is kind of cool. Uh, I can probably nap it. Yeah. But. Is it going to be fun? That's the question. That's the ongoing question. I don't know. If I have to ask. Or if I have to wonder then. Mm, it may not be that fun. Let's see. Yeah, especially with the one with a lot of fossils, that's not going to be easy. I mean, it'll be easy to nap. It's not going to be easy to come up with a finished point because it'll snap right where there's defects. Even though it might be easy to nap. Yeah. I, uh, I slept in today because I wasn't feeling all that well. So... I probably should be doing this in daylight, but I ran out of daylight. I'll probably continue this in the morning. Oh yes, I remember. I did do something else besides sleep today. I went to the public library and I actually looked around instead of assuming a bunch of stuff. They do have four computers in there. I didn't see them before. And yeah, I mean, they, get, they limit your use to one hour per day, but I was in there and I said, you know what, I'm going to test the Wi-Fi. Sure enough, the Wi-Fi is pretty darn good in there. So silly me, I could have been taking advantage of this. But I didn't because I, the last time I was in there, it seemed really tiny. I wasn't really that impressed with the whole thing. Because they didn't have a book that I was looking for. That they said they had it on their website or I looked it up and they should have had it in their inventory but someone had checked it out and not ever brought it back anyway I didn't continue to look around in the library but today I went and I was pleasantly surprised so guess what I can probably upload more than one video a day if that's the case yeah it uploads the I, I shot like a five minute video. I went into the library and I tried to upload that five minute video. It took less than five minutes to upload the five minute video. When normally it takes an hour. So if it uploads like one minute per minute, I'm in business. Because I can, if I have an hour's worth of video, 
I can sit in the library for an hour doing other stuff, uh, emails and looking at different research things or whatever. I can do I can do that kind of stuff while I'm in there waiting an hour to upload an hour's worth of videos or more. I can be in there two hours. Ooh, this might be nice. Interesting, interesting, but it's very porous. But we're getting into some interesting stuff here. Anyway, I was I was happy about that. I actually was happy about about that. So good things in the future, I think. Oh yes. I think there's some good stuff coming in the future. See if I don't think I can actually upload the videos that I'm going to be shooting. I'm really not motivated to upload videos because I said, why, why shoot the video? I can't even upload it. Or I can, but it's got to be like overnight while I'm sleeping and then I got to edit it, maybe. Or, uh, I mean, review it. Uh, first thing in the morning, which I don't really do. Why? I don't know. Anyway, uh, that schedule where I have to wait hours and hours to upload something has been a little bit depressing, but I'm excited now. All right, so this is getting to be, some of this is getting to be okay as far as spalls go. And if I hit it really, really hard, I can get a really, really big flake. Yeah. We'll see. I'll nap some of this on video because this is challenging stuff. Oh, yes. And it's not like rhyolite challenging. It's not that difficult to nap. It just looks like it'll be difficult to get a solid piece out of it without it snapping. without a snap mishap. Yeah. I don't know. I can make thick points out of it. Probably pretty easy. As that's the secret. You want to make something out of almost anything? Just make it really thick. Yeah. All right. Come on. Getting down to the last part. Just trying to get rid of the nasty areas, right? If I can, if I can think of it. Yeah, and just not not just go to town on it, but actually strategize. Oops, so much for strategy. Existing crack. You can see that this coloration is not part of the coloration of the stone. That's, that's when minerals get in and stuff into a natural crack. Yeah, and make that nice coloration. So it was already cracked there, but I can probably get something out of this. This piece, mm, I can probably get something small out of this one. Not fun though. If I hit it just right, I can get some little arrowhead spalls. You know what I mean, down here, maybe. No, didn't work. Not, they're not thin. The flakes are not thin there. So I'll save some of this. Whatever looks flat, all right? Whatever looks flat. Yeah, some of it looks kind of flat. Yeah. I'll just continue. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just save all these pieces, right? Save them all. Except for the clunkers. Well, I can save some of the clunkers too. Yeah, yeah, okay. Anyway, it has that weird 
a weird clinky sound to it of silicified limestone. It's definitely oceanic because it has fossils. Well, I, don't, I can't say definitely because lakes produce fossils too, not just oceans or seas, but lakes. It could be lake fossils. It's from Ohio, so I don't know. I don't know if there used to be an inland sea that went that far in. Probably not. Those are not like any fossils that I've seen. It just looks like a bunch of rocks. Rocks inside of rocks. Like this little rock right there. Inside this other rock. Who knows, that rock might be one billion years old and this other rock... One million years old? I don't know. Look at little pockets. That's not going to be fun to nap. This kind of stuff is not fun to nap. Uh, and uh, was it napped in the past? Well, when you compare it to this kind of stuff, see that? What would you rather nap? Back in the day, if all you got is this, you would use these, of course. And that's not a bad edge. Yeah, that could be, that could present a problem if you were, oh you know, yes, if you were to use it and slip, that'll cut you. Yep. But I'm not going to do that with this one. This one will cut you even, even better. I'm afraid of the, uh, that just barely, I just barely grazed, uh, yeah, I just barely scratched that and it went in. Almost all the way through. So what would you use back in the day? Make an extra trip for this guy. Plus it's got the added benefit of being nicely translucent. Now what, what's the other stuff? What was that other flint? That was uh, uh, actually heat treated, heat treated Ocala chert. Yeah, I was working on Ocala chert yesterday. Why? Because I like it, and I need to get better at it, because I always break it. It's very brittle. Okay, so what else am I going to do? I got I got some time here. I got this root beer thing. So preform I made last night. Yeah, I was doing a little bit of napping. I did some on-camera, napping on-camera as well as off-camera last night. And uh, the on-camera stuff turned out to be... Uh, not successful. Yeah, I snapped a piece of Ocala shirt. And uh, I didn't want to show it, so. And then I napped this from a, a bigger nodule. This is the root, root beer shirt, raw root beer shirt type stuff that we get from Texas. I say we because yeah I can get it too. Sometimes I can find some on the side of the road. There's sometimes there's roads where you can find uh, this kind of chert on the side of the road as small nodules. This is actually a pretty good size. I don't know if I can find this size on my own. I can find little ones like maybe two inches in diameter little nodules of that size two or three inches. But I don't know if it's brought in or if it was just naturally there. Anyway, working this stuff raw can be nice, but it can also be extremely frustrating. So I'm gonna consider this a challenge as well. Put these two little challenges together. I'll make a point from that stuff and I'll make a point from this stuff. And maybe I'll just share the video, right? Part of the video will be that stuff up there on the next, well, on this one too, but on the next video, part of that and part of this, or part of that, part of this. 
Yeah. I think so. Kind of change it up a little bit from the normal format of sticking with the same material. I got to be careful because this stuff will not be forgiving. Why will it not be forgiving? I think this is snapping very, very easily. So when that happens, when it naps really easily, it will show you all the mistakes you do. And if you don't prepare those platforms, it'll crush and you'll see a nice, nasty crushed area. It'll have more of an effect than it would on less lesser quality material. The lesser quality material, a lot of times doesn't even, doesn't even produce a long flake. It just produces a gouge out. All right, so in that sense, it doesn't really show as many errors because it just it doesn't do very much. But with this stuff, it can do a lot. You can thin it down a lot. You can run long flakes on it. It'll show you a lot of what you're doing. Whether it's good or bad, it'll it'll show you what you're doing. I don't know how else to say it. So, is, is there more prep required for better materials? I don't know. I think it balances out. You do need a lot of prep for difficult stuff too, or you're not going to get any kind of cooperation from the stone. But with stone that is cooperative, you still need to prepare a lot because any little mistake will be reflected in the workpiece. And you don't want the, those little mistakes to show up. Little mistakes could be little crushed areas or little step fractures near the edge. You know, see the little step fracture right there? It's not, it's not a fully detached flake. You can see right there. It's not a fully detached flake. Neither is that. It's okay at this stage, but at the ending stages, you don't want that on your edge. And that can be a problem when you go to sharpen your point toward the end. And if you install those step fractures, it's not going to look good. If you're working with nasty material, a lot of times it won't even flake at all, so you don't have to worry about that. But, you know, those little fingernail looking step fractures. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I mean. All right. So, yeah, I, I filmed about an hour yesterday a video working on Ocala Chert. I'll do some more on it. Do some more videos because I've got more of it. I don't got I don't have really large pieces, so don't ask. But I got some nice little ones. But they're for me now because I've already sold off all my excess flakes. I don't have any large excess flakes. I've got I got some large flakes. That I've set aside, and that's it. I don't have like a, a regular supply. Not yet, anyway. It takes a lot more information than I've got to become a rock hound if I want to start rock hounding and get my own material. I need a lot more information first. But for now, I'm not going to do it. I'm not in the right part of the country for one. And number two, it takes a lot of time 
to hunt down sources. Because you don't just you don't want to uh, take anyone's word for it and buy stuff sight unseen. No, you got to go down there and see what you're going to get. That's the smart way to do it. If you don't have any choice, then you got to buy sight unseen. In that case, you just buy little bits at a time, which isn't too bad. And yeah, some of it's not going to be good, but at least you're not spending a lot on the stuff that's not good. You're just buying a little at a time. Eventually you figure out who's got good stuff, who doesn't, who who has good stuff sometimes, but not all the time. Who's got good stuff all the time, but kind of pricey. And you'll have to make a determination. What are you gonna what are you gonna do? I definitely can't go with the pricey stuff. I don't lose money when I when I go with the pricey stuff, but I don't make any money either. You know, breaking even is all well and good if it's just a hobby, but I am depending on some of this money so I can travel. Oh, yes. I don't really like traveling. But I like it even less if I don't have money to do it. Because <laughs> I do want to go. So I, I do want to go places sometimes. So yeah, I'm just messing with this piece, trying to get it thinned down little by little, not taking too much of a chance with with this, except right there. Yeah, I got to be careful with those heavy strikes because they could dive too far in or create a, a situation where I'm a little bit too concave like I almost did right there. See if I if it takes too much off it creates a little scoop out. Can you hear the church bell? I was watching one of my other videos and there was a what surprised me was there was an air raid siren in the background. I'm, I'm going, I'm reviewing the video. I didn't notice it during the video, but I'm reviewing the video and I'm going, wait a second. That's an air raid siren. They got, they still got an air raid siren set up in this town? Apparently, yes. Apparently, they've got one in the next town over also. And uh, I was driving by the other day, yesterday or the day before, whenever. And the, the, uh, the air raid siren is mounted to the top of the fire station on that town next next door, the town next to us, across the river. Yeah, and the thing was blaring. I said, they do have air raid sirens still here. I remember those when I was little. They would they would test them every every week or every month or whatever. I lived near an air force base, and they would test the air raid sirens. All the time. I said, yep, that's what it is. And then I looked up air raid sirens on the on the YouTubes. And yeah, sure enough, it was the European slash American style air raid sirens. They sound similar. World War II. Cold War air raid sirens sound similar between the US and Europe. Uh, back in the day. Now today the, they've changed up a little bit. And sometimes you can't find air raid sirens at all in any towns here in the U.S. Depending on the state. But here I guess there's enough severe weather or other warnings. Maybe flooding. That uh, they have the use. They have to use the air raid siren to warn some people to tune in. Tune in for more information. Turn the radios on. Get on their phones and look at the look at the alerts. Anyway, not a good at dead me because I didn't hear it when I was napping. I didn't even notice it.
and I got my phone on airplane mode when I'm filming so that the microphone doesn't go bzz, bzz, bzz. so yeah if I'm in, if I'm in the zone something something could happen and I'll be just napping away oblivious all right I messed that up, didn't I? Well, I can pretend I didn't want that corner anyway. Yeah. All right, so. That was my story about the air raid siren. That surprised me. I gotta, I gotta keep listening for it. Or maybe I'll just go on the internet and say, how often does this air raid sirens go off here in town? Make it sound like we got bombers going overhead. Get in there, get in the shelters. <laughs> that would be a trip. That would be a terrible thing in this day and age. Wait, did I do it? Let's get a zoom in. No, I can't zoom in because I don't have two fingers exposed. Anyway. I can do this. Yeah, sometimes the material is so nice and the platform so nice that it cooperates. It goes more than halfway, but not all the way. It takes off a lump. It and uh, yep, the termination is okay. Beautiful. I like those. Can I do it every time, every time, every time? Well, no, but I spent a whole year. If you want to hear the story, I spent a whole year how to avoid step fractures when I'm removing large flakes. I don't know if you guys know that. The majority of you that are watching probably don't remember that story. Yeah, avoid step fractures with these long flakes. I spent a whole year figuring out how to avoid step fractures with the long flakes. And in five seconds, tell you how to do it at like you were five. Just don't bite off more than you can chew. That's it. Take off what you think you can take off. And that's it. Don't get too greedy. It turned out to be too greedy. So I was a little bit greedy with that. And it stepped because I thought it would go a little further. But luckily, it didn't step in the first half. This half. It stepped a little bit. Well, maybe it's exactly halfway. But as long as it goes halfway or more with that step fracture, you can get it from the other side relatively easily did it do it sometimes it'll go yeah it did it sometimes it'll sneak and go because this was two two pieces let's see where is it yeah like that where is this other one like this That one's like that. This has got two, two parts to it. Okay. Pretty sure that's how it goes, yeah. Anyway, see that? The first, with a bad material, that if it was bad material, it would have been only this flake. But since it's good material, it pushed a little bit more along that ridge and continued. That's one of the differences between bad material and good material. Good material will be a little more forgiving and it'll be a little more cooperative and it will push the flake a little bit further and you'll go, yeah. That's right. That's what it should do. Yeah. One more major flake one or two more major flakes and then we're done for this particular segment 
it's a major flick near the tip. Ooh, it, no, it didn't overshoot. I don't know, did it overshoot? I don't think so. I think that was already there. I mean, I know that was already there. I just don't know if it got bigger. I don't think it did. I think it went down in to, toward the center rather than fanning out that way toward the side. Okay, so that was nice. Now we go to the next spot down. I've already abraded the whole edge, so just taking opportunities. And did it do it? Yep, it went past halfway. That's what I wanted it to do, and then cleared off stiff fracturing. But see these little radial cracks? See these? It indicates a very hard strike usually on tough stone you get those little radial cracks that go this way those can be dangerous <clears throat> if they're deep they can crack the whole piece so you gotta watch it i gotta watch it all right so it's getting <clears throat> pretty translucent <clears throat> that's a really nice preform I forget how nice this is to nap, although it, it can be finicky because it is really, really hard. It feels like tempered glass, and tempered glass can be difficult to nap, very difficult. All right, that's it for now.